In this video, I'm going to compare two of Maxwell's equations, or two of the fundamental laws of electromagnetism. They are Faraday's law and Ampere's law. So we're going to compare these two guys. And we're specifically going to look at the differential form of both of these equations. So Faraday's law, or Faraday's law of induction, is the one on the left-hand side over here. And this over here is Ampere's circuital law. And it's also got Maxwell's modification. So that's this displacement current term. So Ampere recognized that currents cause circulations of magnetic fields. And Maxwell also recognized that changing electric fields can do the same thing, it can have the same effect. And Faraday recognized that changing magnetic fields can induce circulating electric fields. And this little negative sign over here is very important. It tells you the sign of that circulation opposes the change. So circulation in the electric field has to oppose the change in magnetic field. And when I say change, I always mean change with respect to time. That's why we have these partial derivatives with respect to time. So let's compare these two equations in differential form. What do we have on the left-hand side of both of the equations? Well, we have the curl operator. And the curl operator takes the del operator, and it takes the cross product with whatever vector field you're dealing with. So this is sometimes called nabla. It is the del operator. So we have the curl of the electric field and the curl of the magnetic field. On the right-hand side of Faraday's law of induction, we have the time derivative of the magnetic field. So changing magnetic fields can cause circulating electric fields. That is also true for uh, the opposite, right? Changing electric fields can cause circulating magnetic fields. But there's an additional term, which is this J term, and that is the current density vector. So J points in the direction of where positive charges are moving, and its magnitude is how much current, how much electric current is flowing per unit area. So you can think of this as if you took the surface integral uh, of this guy, you would get the current current I in amps. And this guy over here, this is the displacement current. So this is all about how does the electric field change with respect to time. And notice that there's no negative sign. This is positive. So electric fields and magnetic fields can actually produce each other. And the way that they uh, initiate each other is through circulation. So they can actually cause each other to circulate. And that's actually the principle behind electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are electric fields and magnetic fields interacting and causing each other to circulate. And that's how electromagnetic waves can propagate through space. So let's have a look at a, at a single point in three-dimensional space. So let's have a look at this point over here. Now this point has got a magnetic field. Let's say the magnetic field is pointing this way. And this is the B field. Then what we can say is, how about we introduce a slightly little smaller vector that's actually the change in the magnetic field. So this guy will be D, B, D, T. And we're writing the partial derivative notation because it's a partial derivative with respect to time. So that's what this thing is. So what we would actually be interested in is the curl. And the curl would be the negative of this vector. And that would tell us how the electric field circulates in three-dimensional space. So that's actually a very useful concept. right? We want, to, we want to actually compute these guys. We want to know what does it actually look like from a visual perspective. Visually, if you have a magnetic field and the derivative is pointing in this direction, the, the B field is going to change along this way. right? That's, that's what it's going to end up looking like. So if the B field is pointing along uh, this way and it's, it's being told by the derivative to change this way, then the electric field's curl will point in the opposite direction. And the curl vector, if it points in this direction, will mean that there's a circulation in that way. right? Or if you think about this, if you have a circulation like this, I'll, I'll uh, complete the circle over here. If you have a circulation like this, where this side is closer to us, this side's further away from us, and if this is the electric field circulation, what is, what is actually going to cause that? Well, you need to have a magnetic field that is changing in the downward direction, right? That's Lenz's law. So 
Let's have a look at this side. What can we, what can we uh, use to produce a circulating magnetic field? Well, to get a circulating magnetic field, we can either have current flowing or we can have electric fields changing. So what we can do is imagine there is a circulating magnetic field like this. And I'll put this guy over here. I'll draw that little arrow. And then imagine what could be causing this circulation. Well, we could either have some kind of current flowing through here, some kind of J, or we could have an electric field. So imagine there's also an electric field vector like this. And imagine that this electric field vector is pointing in the upwards direction, or its derivative is pointing in the upwards direction. So that's the derivative of the electric field vector. That's what this guy is. So it's a tiny little nudge upwards. And that's what's going to cause this circulation. So keep in mind, this is a positive sign, whereas in Faraday's law, we've got a negative sign. So that means that the negative of this derivative vector is actually going to be uh, what causes our circulation. And the curl, remember what the curl is. The curl, if you take the curl, the curl actually describes the axis around which you're rotating. So if this is some kind of vector, then the curl will be around this way, right? If you use the right-hand rule. That's what the curl is describing. So this is just a general theoretical overview and a comparison of Faraday's law and Ampere's law in differential form. I want you to try and draw these diagrams and actually see uh, for yourself that this is how electromagnetism behaves. This is how electric fields and magnetic fields influence e each other. If you have a circulation in the electric field, it has to be due to a changing ma uh, magnetic field. And if you have a, a circulation in the uh, magnetic field, it has to either be due to some current flowing or it can be a changing electric field.